<laughs> his car. It was like they were yelling at a drive through window. It's crazy. All right, we're rolling again, Marjorie. Okay. Yeah, Marjorie. So uh, it, let's do that from the top again. Just we got a different lens. I'm going to start off again. Just state your name and where we're at. I am Marjorie Joyner Northup. Uh, I'm in the house that I lived in for many years with my husband, Lamar Northup, who designed and built it. He's going to get the mic a little closer. I'm doing too many things at once. I'm so sorry. It's all, all good. Right. You're, you're, clean, jo you're clean, Jason. Clean, clean, clean. Clean. <clears throat> yeah, he usually has two other people doing what he's doing. Start again. Once again, from the top. Roll okay. it. I'm Marjorie Joyner Northup. I am in the house that I lived in for many years on 1308 Revere Road. I'm in a house that my husband designed and built. We had many happy years here together and raised three children. And Marjorie? Do you remember moving into this house? No, I don't. If you, again, I want to say the question, if you can say it, like, I, you know, I don't remember moving into this house, really. So do you remember moving into this house? No, I don't remember moving into this house. Can you describe um, maybe what a typical Saturday was like here at the house, back when you were living here? Well, it seems to me that Saturday wasn't any different from any other day. I mean, just a regular day. What was the weekdays like in this house then? What were the weekdays? Were there, was, there, were there, was it busy? Were people coming and going? Yeah, people were coming and going. My kids' friends were coming and going. So if you could just do that again, like when I say a typical weekday in the house, people were coming and going and it was a busy place. If you could do it like that again. Okay, it was a busy, day, busy week, people were coming and going, and it was a fun time here. Happy memories. Do you, uh, were you impressed, the, what about the house was the, one of your favorite qualities, other than it being a place where you lived and maybe that your husband built it? Was the light part of it, or was it a functionality of, was there yeah. certain? I think one of the, the thing I enjoyed the most was just looking out of these wonderful windows, and there are windows all across the living room and you could look out and see the woods and then downstairs it's all glass looking out towards the creek and that's beautiful it's wonderful to live on a creek i have a favorite story about the creek is a bunch of us were down there a bunch of kids in the creek looking around and one of them said well, well where does this creek go marjorie and I, started telling him, I said, well, it goes under the bridge on down, and it goes down, and it goes into the Yadkin River, and then the Yadkin River goes into the P.D. River, and the P.D. River goes through South Carolina all the way down to Myrtle Beach. And in a few minutes, somebody of our group was missing one of the kids. I said, well, where did she go? And they said, oh, she's gone to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Love that story. That we got her back before she got there. So, would you say, uh, other than the house itself and the property itself, that the creek was a really va a valuable place for you here? Yeah. Talk about the creek a little bit more. Yeah, the creek. Uh, well, there was always something going on down there. The kids would go down there and find fish and cray crayfish. There's a little pond down there that had fish in it. So you could go down there and actually catch a fish. And uh, there's just something going on. You catch crayfish. It was just an interesting place to be. Oh, and uh, 
is there uh, any space here that you considered sacred, spiritual, or a, a, a your favorite getaway place on this property for mm -hmm. your own sanity? I think it all made me, you know, feel really good. I could just put a chair out there. Oh, we had some chairs out there. And feel like I was really spiritually alive. And uh, I loved it. Always have. Were all, uh, did your family eat most, eat most of the meals together? Was there, was there a meal room or a, a dinner hour? No, we had a very nice dining table at that end down there next to the kitchen with chairs about, it would seat. Well, actually it was a, we bought the table in Denmark, if you can believe it, and had it shipped back here. And it would uh, pull out from both ends, so we actually, you could seat as many as 10 people there, but it seated six very nicely. And uh, were holidays a major event here in the house? Christmas, Thanksgiving? Easter? Yeah, we did. We had a lot of times we'd have my whole family here. And, uh, I can remember renting when we had this overflow of people, renting tables. And we had the big table there that would seat 10. And then the rental tables would come down this way and seat even more. Could you tell that story again to me and say it uh, at Christmas or Thanksgiving sometimes okay. together if we were in here? And we... At Christmas or Thanksgiving sometimes we'd have a lot of people and we'd have them at the, at the main table, which would seat eight or ten, and then we'd rent tables and seat as many as 20 or 25. Was there a special area in the house for the children to eat? Was there children, you know, or anything like that? Or they no, were all part of it? They were all part of it. We all ate together. And there was, a, was there a special chair in the house that the children had to sit in sometimes for some no, kind we of all, behavior? We all, no, oh, this one we call, <laughs> we call this the main chair, the one I'm sitting in. And say, they well, did you something. Describe why you. If they did something really bad or something, we'd say, you got to go sit in the main chair. Did you have uh, a lot of neighborhood friends yourself in this, uh, or was it was there a vibrant neighborhood back when you lived yeah, there? Yeah, it was. It was nice and a lot of friends, and the kids could walk to school, and that was nice. So it was a good living. We enjoyed, especially enjoyed the porch because we could eat out there too. Was the, did the, some people say modernist homes might be particularly not so kid safe. How did you feel about your kids growing up, them being in this house? Well, I up? felt like it was very, very safe. I don't know why anybody would think their modern homes weren't safe. It's according to how they were designed. Did you and uh, Lamar choose the furnishings together for the house? Yes, uh -huh, we did. So if you could repeat that, you know, Lamar and I, my husband. Lamar and I chose the furnishings for the house. Was there any particular piece that you liked, had a fondness for or something was like your couch versus or that table you described? Could you... Yeah, we had a wonderful couch. I'm trying to think of the designer's name, but anyway, it was... What'd she say? Charles Eames. Charles Eames, an Eames couch. And then the dining room table was beautiful. As I said, we got that in Denmark and it shipped back over here. Did you and uh, Uncle Lamar talk about art a lot in the house? Was that something that, were you guys active well, in the we, art community? Oh yeah, we were very active in the art community. Yeah, most of our friends were artists. And would, would you care to talk to us about or tell us any stories about your work with the prodigals? 
Oh, how did that happen to come up? Oh, uh, Dottie mentioned that. Oh, she yeah. was talking about you, and that's, that's how I know about it. I oh, yeah. Uh -huh. didn't know if you wanted to talk about it. Oh, yeah. I don't want to talk about okay, it. Okay, no problem. Oh, and then uh, I, someone that was brought to my attention last night, uh, there was a gentleman named Toby that helped out here. What? Yeah, a uh, woman who worked woman. for me for about 50 years. And she just come once a week, and she was very religious. She'd pray for us as long as she was here, but mostly she did ironing and just was a real, real good friend. I still keep up with her family. Did you guys uh, entertain much here other than, uh, so for holidays, were there other community groups that might have came by in the art community? I don't know. I mean, we just had a lot of people coming in and out. Okay. Did the house seem big enough for you? Were closets big enough? Did you have enough space for everything you needed? Yeah, it really was. As a mother? Very, very well designed, lots of. Lots of good closet space. And then downstairs, Lamar had a studio down there, and there was always extra space you could stick things in downstairs. Was that, uh, was that considered his workshop down below? Is that, right, was that's that where it was. limits to the kids or anything? Or? I don't know if it's off limits, but they didn't go in there much because he was busy down there working. And uh, without getting too much into your business, but what were you, uh, how did you stay busy? Because I know you had kids and you're taking care of the house on some levels. But well, I was working at Renolda House Museum. I worked there for 25 years, so I was, you know, out working. And uh, again, back to the artist community that uh, they were, it was mentioned yesterday that you were part of uh, the beginnings of a group called SICA, Southeastern Contemporary Center. Yeah, right. We help. Would you like to talk about that at all? Not particularly. It's a wonderful place where art is shown, and we were one of the founders of it. And it's going real well still today. Could you say that again? Did you say SICA was something that... SICA was a Southeastern Center for Contemporary Art. And uh, so we had something to do with the founding of it. And it's done re very well and we're very proud of it, being a part of it. I, uh, I can't help but notice that lamp beside your left elbow there. Is yeah. that something you... Could you talk about that lamp? Yeah, my husband made this. He made several of these. And he sold most of them, but we kept a few. You know, I, I always laugh when I look at it because he said, every one of these holes is different, he said. There's not any of them that are exactly alike. I always liked, thought about that when I looked at it. I met, uh, I guess I met you, you and your husband, I, met, I was at the... Greensboro Botanical Garden Show, Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill. I was there with Dottie back in oh, the day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had his sculptures out in the garden. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? Did you, uh, I mean, I've been here for two days now, and I can never get tired of walking around back here around the sculptures. Mm -hmm. uh, was that a, I know you said you spent time in the garden, you had a meditation area there, but also did, did you help him place the, the sculptures? Yeah, and they were all over the place. He, you know, he finally just gave them away when we were getting ready to, you know, not be here anymore. And most of them are, are in my family. They just came and took some. I guess somebody just left that one. Anyway, it's nice to look out there and at least see one. The uh, Japanese, is that a pear, Japanese pear? Or no? Yeah. Willow, yeah. or what, maple? Maple, right. Did you uh, choose the, some of the landscape or the trees and fauna that are here? Uh, not the trees, but the Japanese maple. That's the one maybe, main one I remember getting and putting out. Oh, was there 
organic garden out front. Mm-hmm. Was there like is organic garden? Is that something y'all ever had going to or? Yeah, we had a nice garden out front with the vegetables. That we we get most of our fresh vegetables from there. Who influenced your husband's sculpture design? Sculpture design? Sculpture design. I I don't know. Ron Cousy? I don't know, because he studied. Ron Ron Cousy was a real influence on his sculpture design. Probably. I have that three diamond stacked one. I didn't know if you don't remember. remember that. Could you talk about the, the children and uh, some of the chores they may have had and how did you come up with a particular name for one child who had to take turns being the, was it the hopper? Yeah. We had three children. Had a uh, girl, when she was three, then we had twins. So we had, I always say, three under three. That was a handful. They were just lots of fun. and. Of course, I think they really enjoyed this area, you know, being able to go back into the woods, and they love the creek. Uh, it was a great, it's a great place for children. Aunt Marjorie. When Uncle Lamar came back from Chicago after studying with Mies van der Rohe, um, he was really excited about the modernist movement, wasn't yeah, he? Uh-huh. And had hoped to really transform design in Winston-Salem. That's right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, he didn't get very far because most people certainly just didn't want a modern house. They just wanted what everybody else had. So anyway, he did his firm. He had a for the architectural firm, Hines and Orthop and Ursoy. And they, you know, they were real busy, but they didn't do a lot of modern because people just didn't want that modern. I remember one particular story where a woman called him to design a house and wanted it to be very traditional, a cologne, true colonial. Uh-huh. Do you remember telling oh, yeah. that story? Can you tell that story? From well, she called him. She wanted to be very what traditional, and he said he'd be glad to do one. He said, now, you want it really traditional? She said, oh, yes, very traditional. He said, well, that means you've got to have traditional water and everything else, you know, just letting her know that traditional is like way back in the olden days, so that didn't go very far. I think she was insulted. Olden days, I kind of act like I remember them because I remember people that talked about them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you were a younger person during the olden days. How how did it feel to be in a more modern house during a period when? I mean, you didn't feel like an elitist. I'm, I don't think I don't get that from you. But yeah. um, did you? Feel, were you lucky to be here? Did you feel privileged or somehow? Yeah, I felt very privileged. I mean, as I said, just looking out these windows, the modern design just has so much going for it, I thought. And I love the balcony, especially after it got, uh, got uh, screened in. That was wonderful. We ate out there a lot, and it was just a, it's just a good house to be in, happy house. And with four bedrooms, you know, the downstairs we had two kids down there, and then one up here next to our bedroom, and it worked out really well. Everybody had their own space. Space is important, and also uh, the minimalist approach of the house makes me happy. Uh, how did noise travel in the house with four children? Mm-hmm. Was there a was there a noise element? You kind of knew where all the kids were and what they no, were. No, they have to? three children. Oh, I meant sorry. I keep thinking about Donnie here oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, she was over here a lot too. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it was worked out fine. 
Was there any particular noise, uh, noisy moments you remember with Dottie and Jan? No, not really. Not really. Okay. Didn't ha didn't have to put them in the mean chair too much. No. <laughs> Oh, how, yeah, how was the kitchen for you as the homemaker, if you will? And I use that term loosely because I know you're more of a uh, liberated woman than I've probably ever met in my life. But uh, how was the kitchen for you uh, to, to do, I mean, small, I hear. You had a uh, small fridge. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Uh, everything worked. You want to talk about any of your, how the kitchen went about for you? Oh, it was all that I needed, so I adapted pretty well. Never had a dishwasher, but that was fine. It was good. Enjoyed it. And you got by for years without air conditioning, too. I guess mm -hmm. that's true. That's right. I remember wanting it, and my husband was very much against it. I don't know exactly why. I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. I said, when you die, I said, the first person I'm going to call after the funeral directed his air conditioning, and I did. I did. <laughs> he died. I went straight to the phone and called the air conditioner to come and start working on that. How long were you and Uncle Lamar married? I don't know, over 50 years. Over 50 years. What, how did you meet? Uh, he was my... One of my brother's best friends, that's how we met. Isn't that interesting? They ran around in high school together. Did you grow up in Winston-Salem? I did. I say I grew up in I grew up in Winston-Salem. I only lived a few blocks from where Lamar lived when they moved. First they lived out on Carolina Circle and then after Father Northup died, Mother Northup wanted to live closer to St. Paul's Episcopal Church. So she moved into a house on West 4th Street or 5th Street. And uh, that worked out very nice for her. And Lamar built her, as she was an artist, built her a studio in the back of the house where she had many happy hours painting. So Were you a painter, Evelyn? No, but his whole family was into art. When you think about it, his father was an architect and his mother was an artist, so. And then he was an architect, so. There's a lot of art in one family, isn't there? What did your parents think of the house? Did they have a... They well, they just sort of accepted it because they loved Lamar. and the kind of houses he designed. He liked designing modern houses. Was, uh, were you guys accepted in the rest of the Northup clan, if you will? Because oh, yeah. Not every Northup had a house like this, I'm sure. Well, they're, they're very well accepted. Was there art in your background, in your family growing up? Well, they were interested in art, and I had a sister who taught uh, art for 30 years at High Point University. So, yeah, we were into art in my family. As well as he is. Is there a story that goes behind the, the person commissioned to paint the cabinets and the downstairs draw of the doors? Oh, yeah. Well, that was just a real good friend of ours, and her name was Sue Moore. She's dead now, but we had asked her when we were uh, getting ready to move in the house whether she would do some. Does, the designs for our kitchen cabinets. And also, is not here now, but we a good friend. We wanted to have a door in our bedroom that when you opened it, it was gonna go against the wall. And we said, we want you to paint it. And we want you to paint it something that would make us happy when we woke up in the morning. And he did. It's no longer there, so. But anyway, we really enjoyed it. Do you have any memories or uh, like recollections of there was a time Hugo came through and there was a tornado maybe that damaged the house or the roof? No. 
It's all stood up very well. You don't remember, Aunt Marjorie, when the tornado, some trees fell on the foyer? Oh, I forgot. Y'all had to move out into a condo for a year. Oh, I didn't, you don't I, remember that. I've forgotten. Okay. That's all right. Forgot all about that. <coughs> Thank you, Dottie. You got a better memory than I do. Oh, yes. Well, now, I guess we'll get down to the lick log, Aunt Marjorie. How do you feel about Miss Dottie B buying this former jewel in the Ardmore village? Nothing, nothing makes me happier to know that somebody who's in the family will have this house and it make, or use this house, and it just makes me very, very happy. And I know it would make Lamar happy. Does that mean you consider Dottie part of the family? That's, of course. She's like one of your other daughters? That's it. Margie, what do you, you lived in Winston-Salem for a long time. What do you, what do you like most about Winston-Salem? And, uh, or what do you like least about it? I mean, you've seen it change a lot over the years. I like most about it is, uh, could you start that again with what I like most about Winston-Salem? What I like most about Winston-Salem is it is it's a good-sized town. That means there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of uh, things you can go to, and a lot of art going on that you can take part in, and uh, it's just a comfortable place to live. I love it. I'm glad I stayed here. I'm glad I didn't have to move out of town. Well, is there anything you'd like to tell us that we haven't touched on about you and this house, a particularly precious memory or, or something that I don't know about? Well, I know I don't know about it, but I haven't heard yet. Or if you'd like to just address us and talk about your... Um, 50 year love affair with Lamar, his house, or any of that. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth on that one, but just. Yeah. Just well, it's just been a happy, happy time here and raising three children, and they were happy here, I think. And uh, I think that's the main thing. It was just a happy place to. I had one child to live. I had one child that's crazy about horses, and if you can believe it, Two blocks away, there was a barn where there was a ho where there were horses that she could go up there and ride. And well, the laugh about that, I was went out of town for a week. When I came back, my husband had bought her a horse. I about flipped, but anyway, that worked out fine too. She's always liked horses and always kept one most of her life, even after she was married. But no more. Did you guys have any uh, animals or pets here that you were fond of or you remember? We had, we always had dogs, seems to me. A dog, and that was good. No cats, just dogs. That's usually one dog. Do you remember Saint? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell, look in the camera and tell us a little about Saint? Saint was a Bedlington Terrier. I don't know whether you know what a Bedlington Terrier is. They're sort of unusual type of dog. It looks like a lamb. It had a crazy personality, but it was just lots of fun, and we really enjoyed him. Did you, uh, did you find uh, Winston-Salem to be... Uh yeah, I know I grew up in Gaston County, and I helped with the segregation of our schools just by being in it at 7 and 8 through those years. Mm -hmm. Did you guys uh, experience the civil rights movements in any particular personal way here in, in Winston-Salem and in your life? Yeah, well, I took part in that, and I think I was a part in making it acceptable. I don't know how to describe that, but anyway, it worked out though fine. Dottie, 
Johnny? You got something you want to ask your aunt? I was going to ask you, if you could say that again on the civil rights, to say this, during the 60s there was a, the unrest in the nation or what, and comment how it affected you guys in this house, if you will. Well, during the 60s, the civil rights was going on, but thinking about how it affected me, I can't think, except I was very open for it and very much for integrating the schools and other things and was able to do a little bit to help with that. I always love to hear stories about uh, you taking things to the Black Panthers Clubhouse. Yeah, that's Thompson right. Jan love to tell those stories. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Well, the Black Panthers had a clubhouse here. Most people were even scared to go near it, but I wasn't, and I was thinking that would be one way to let people know that we really wanted to do the right thing. So I would take some food over there sometime and try to be a, let them know that they, people, not everybody was afraid of them, that we wanted to do the right thing. Oh, yes. Now, and then one last thing, I was actually, Dottie sort of told me I should come try to sneak into the Renolda house. Oh, yeah. Did you get a Lifetime Achievement Award released recently? Or? Well, did I, Dottie? Well, it was the Chronicle newspaper. Chronicle newspaper. I'm sorry. Oh, not yeah. Not Renolda sorry. house. Oh, yeah. It's the Chronicle newspaper. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? Lifetime no. Achievement Award? No. no. Uh -huh. Tell me about it, Dottie. Um, I forgot. You invited me and Jan to a big dinner at the Benton Convention Center, and you were awarded a Lifetime Achievement oh. Award for your work in civil rights through art. Mm. And we were so proud and pleased to be there. So, you know, the mm. Chronicle newspaper is the book.